we are starting with the numericals of rolling contact bearing first let us see what are the formulas that you'll have to remember while solving the numericals of rolling contact bearing in fact not remember but refer from bhandari design data book because in this video i am going to teach you how you should solve your numericals by taking the formulas the values from bhandari design data book so let's start the first formula that you'll have to understand which is there on page 15.2 of bhandari design data book is equivalent bearing load p is load bearing load p is your bearing load e stands for equivalent so equivalent bearing load right what is equivalent equal of the two loads which two loads radial load and axial load f is your load r is radial load and a is your axial load so fr is radial load fa is axial load v and x if you do sorry x and y if you don't understand what is x what is y then with which load it is that you should understand if x is with fr then it is radial load factor x is with radial load so x is the radial load factor y is with axial load so it is the axial load factor so radial load factor axial load factor v is your race rotation factor v stands for race rotation factor x and y values will be given to you in the numericals if it is not given then you will have to refer a table how i'll teach you but first let us see what is race rotation factor so if in your numerical it is mentioned that inner race is rotating then you will take v is 1 if it is mentioned that outer race is rotating you will take v is equal to 1.2 if it is self aligning bearings then you are going to take v as 1 if nothing is mentioned then also you are going to take v as 1 so this is how you take the values of this factor which is race rotation factor now some books in some places along with equivalent load this application factor load application factor or service factor that is also multiplied in the equivalent bearing load so the formula of equivalent load which was x v f r plus y f a you have to multiply it with the service factor or load application factor let's move ahead it is on page 15.2 of bhandari design data book now i was talking to you about these factors x and y radial load factor axial load factor x is your radial load factor y is your axial load factor x is your radial load factor y is your axial load factor so how to select those values it is selected on the basis of bearing suppose if your bearing in your numerical it is said that you have to design a deep groove ball bearing then you should refer this table how to refer it i'll tell you i'll teach you when we are solving the numericals but if it is mentioned that it is angular contact ball bearings then you have to refer this table also if it is a single row angular contact bearing you should be referring this table only if it is a double row angular contact ball bearings then this last table values you are going to refer that to you have to refer on the basis of the ratio of axial load to your radial load and your table of e but how to select it that's a different part i'll teach you later but here we are talking that this x and y values are 
basically selected on the basis of type of bearing. Types have not finished. Next up are your self-aligning bearing. So if your numerical is on self-aligning bearing and you have to select your X and Y factors, you should be referring this table. If your numerical is a spherical roller bearing and you have to select X, Y factors, you should be referring to staper roller bearings. You have to be referring this table. Next, these are available in Bhandari design data book. These all values, the stable of values of X and Y for dynamically loaded bearing. You should find out this and on basis of that, you'll be able to find out this, this whole table of finding your X and Y values. But I would also like to share you the table, which is there in your PSD design data book. here in Bhandari design data book, your values are mentioned in this manner. It depends on your bore diameter, right? But in PSG design data book, it is based on your SKF series, your bearing number, series number, right? So if your numericals, in your numericals, it is mentioned that on basis of this bearing type, you will have to find out your X and Y value. Bearing type is here, but if it is based on the bearing number also, then from PSD design data book, it becomes easier. In Bhandari design data book, you should be knowing your bore diameter. Like I said here, you should be knowing whether it is a light series, medium series bore, or whether the bore diameter is from this diameter to other diameter, what exactly it is given on basis of that, you'll have to select the value. Selection of values is very easy. I'll teach you how to do it. Let's move ahead. Next up, formula is your load life relationship, right? Now there are lives like L10 life or let us call L90 life. There is a life which is L50 life, right? So what is L10? L10 stands for life of the bearing when 10% of bearings will fail and remaining 90% will be operational. L50 stands for 50% bearings will fail and 50% will be operations. And at that time, whatever revolutions that bearing would have rotated, say million revolutions, that would be the life of that day, right? So explanation of all these factors I have given me in my previous videos for that. But now we are just discussing the formulas. So L10 is your rated life, rated bearing life, right? You should know this because in numerical, it will be asked that find rated life, then you should know. But remember, this is a million revolution, right? So suppose 236 million revolutions. So 236 into 10 raised to 6 revolutions. Million, it is 10 raised to 6, right? So million revolution is your rated life. C is your dynamic load capacity or dynamic load rating. In some books here, this factor is A. In some books, it is P. So A or P is based on whether your numerical is on ball bearing or your numerical is on roller bearing. So if ball bearings, right, or self-aligning bearings, you'll take A as 3. This ratio A or P, you'll take it as 3. But if the numericals are on roller bearings, this ratio you're going to take it as 10 by three. Moving ahead. What if the life, okay, this again, this is there on 15.2 of your, not PSG, it is on 15.2 of your Bhandari design data book. This numerical, this formula, sorry, you'll be able to find out on page 15.2. Moving ahead. Load life relationship. 
in the load life relationship if l10 is not given in your numericals but the life is given in hours see this is also rated bearing life and l10 is also rated bearing life but l10 is in million revolutions and l10 h h stands for hours so if the life is in given in hours you will have to convert it into your million revolutions life right mr so for that this formula is given conversion of life from hours to million revolution right so remember this formula is given on page 15.2 of bhandari design data n stands for the speed of rotation of the shaft or bearing moving ahead relationship between life and reliability of the rolling contact bearing now see sometimes your numerical will be asked that mm, find out the life when 90% bearings are operational 10% has failed so at that time finding life rated life l10 is okay but what if the reliability is 99% what if the reliability is 95% then at that time you will have to use this formula which is L upon L ten is natural log of one upon R upon natural log of one upon R by ninety raised to one upon B, where obviously R ninety your reliability will be zero point nine, A is six point eighty four, and this B is one point. One seven, right? So, if you write down this R ninety as zero point nine, and take the natural log of this one upon zero point nine, then you will get the value is nine point four nine one, and then this formula, which is log natural log of one upon R. So, either you can use this value or oh sorry this formula or you can use this formula by placing this r90 reliability as since it is percent so obviously when you write down 90% divided by 100 right so it will become 0 0.9 so when you put the reliability as 90% then you will get the value as 9.491 so if you want to remember this formula that's okay otherwise this formula is already there in the Bhandari design data book on same page 15.2. Now, very important question is asked in exam. How to do the selection of bearing from manufacturer's catalog, right? Or say design data book. So, the first step is that you should calculate radial load. See, this question is a theoretical question. It is asked for seven marks in our university exams. So you'll have to write down all the steps properly one by one without missing the sequence. So first you are going to calculate radial load. Then you are going to calculate axial load. And you are going to determine the diameter of the shaft on the basis of the load. So first step you're going to calculate radial load axial load and diameter of the shaft. This is the first step. Second step, select the type of bearing and appropriate size, right? Whether you're going to use deep groove ball bearing, whether you're going to use self-aligning bearing, depending on the application, you're going to select the type of bearing and approximate size of the bearing appropriate size of the bearing, not approximate. It is the appropriate size of the bearing. You're going to do it. Next up, you're going to determine your static dynamic capacity, which is mentioned by CO and dynamic load capacity, which is mentioned by C. CO stands for static load capacity or static load rating. It is also called a static load rating or static load capacity. And C stands for dynamic load rating or dynamic load capacity. 
So the third step is that you're going to determine C and CO from the manufacturer's catalog. Next, to solve, we are going to do when we are going to solve the numerical. So at that time, you'll understand more. But you have to remember these steps. Next, you have to calculate the ratio of axial load to the static load capacity. And you're going to calculate the ratio of axial load upon race rotation factor into radial factor that is VFR. So you're going to calculate FA upon VFR. So on basis of these ratios, you will be able to calculate your radial load factor X and your axial load factor Y. Right? I'll show you the table also that what we were talking about and how these steps are referred. Next up is that you're going to select the load application factor or service factor. Next, you're going to calculate the equivalent dynamic load that is PE. We have written the formula right now. The formula was PE is equal to XVFR plus YFA into your service factor of application factor, whatever you write down CSK, whatever, or I can write down S also, right? So sixth step is to calculate your equivalent dynamic load. Next is to find out the life of the bearing L10. Then you are going to calculate the required dynamic load capacity, CR. Then if your C is greater than CR, bearing is suitable. But C is less than CR, you should select the next series. And then again, you should start from step number two. Right? So I'll give you an example. Suppose if I did all the calculations on the basis of bearing number 6002, right? I did everything like this. And then in the end, if I found out that my required dynamic load capacity, my calculated dynamic load capacity is less than this C dynamic load capacity, then the bearing is suitable. But if I calculated and I found out the value more, then I should be taking the next series that is 600 after 6002, whichever comes, say if it is 6003 or whichever series, the next series bearing is there, I will have to select it. I was just giving an example of these nine steps that you should be doing. So these nine steps, if I want to show you from this table, right? then that's what I can show you. You'll have to first calculate FA, FR. You'll have to calculate the diameter also of the shaft. On basis of that, you'll have to find out this ratio. On basis of that, you will calculate X, Y values. On basis of your dynamic load capacity or say your static load capacity CO, you'll also have to find out FA by CO and FA by FR. And on basis of these two values, your particular value will be selected of X and Y. And then further, you will have to calculate your required dynamic capacity. So again, I will repeat the steps since this comes in exam. So the first step is calculate the radial load and axial load, FR, FA, and diameter of the shaft. You'll have to select the type of the bearing and appropriate size of the bearing. You'll have to determine the CO, static load capacity, C, dynamic load capacity from manufacturer's catalog. Based on FA by CO and FA by VFR, 
you are going to select your radial load factor and your axial load factor. Then you're going to select your load application factor or service factor. Then you're going to calculate your equivalent dynamic load PE. Then you're going to select the size of the bearing, sorry, the life of the bearing. Then you're going to calculate the required dynamic load capacity and check whether C is greater than CR, suitable. C is less than CR, select the next. Last step is that you're going to calculate the equivalent static load and check if your static load capacity CO is greater than PO. If not, again, you are going to move to next step of the pairing selection and proceed in the same manner. So these are the 10 steps that you will require while selecting suitable bearing from manufacturer's catalog. Moving ahead, let's start with the first numerical. The first numerical is a single row deep groove ball bearing. See, the first step itself gives you a certain value, single row deep groove ball bearing. The numerical is of a ball bearing. So whenever your numerical is of ball bearing, your formula of load life relationship, L10 is C upon PE raised to A or P, whatever you write down this. A or P is three. Why? Because this numerical is of a ball bearing, right? So you should first see which type of bearing it is. Based on that, you will be able to solve your numerical. The shaft diameter is given 75 mm. Rotates with 125 RPM. The shaft is rotating with 120 RPM. N. Your N is 125 RPM. The bearing is subjected to radial load. It is given in kilonewton. You'll have to multiply into 10 raised to 3. So it is 21,000 Newton. And there is no axial load. Thrust load, axial load. It is 0. Right? So there is no thrust load or axial load. They are telling us to find out the expected life of the bearing. If it is 1000 hours, what would be the life in million revolutions and your dynamic load carrying capacity or dynamic load rating? That is capital C. So let's start first up. Since there is no axial load, so if I put this formula, P is equal to XV FR plus Y FA into your service factor S or KA, whatever you write down, right? Axial load is zero. If this is zero, obviously this whole thing will become zero. So this will become zero. Load factor, nothing is given load application factor or service factor. So I'm going to take one. Nothing is mentioned. Sorry, this should be V. X, V, F, R plus Y, F, A. Nothing is mentioned regarding whether the inner race rotates, outer race rotates, and neither it is a problem of self-aligning bearing. So we are going to assume inner race rotates and we are going to assume V as one. Nothing is given regarding X also. So we are going to consider it as one. So obviously your P will become FR. Your PE will become FR, equivalent load. In some books it is P, in some books it is PE. So your equivalent bearing load will become 21,000, which is exactly similar to your radial load. Moving ahead. Next up. If you see here, N is given and L10H is given, life in hours is given, but you need the life in million revolutions. So from the formula on page 15.2 of Bhandari Design Data Book, you can take this formula. It's written L10 is 
60 into n into l 10 h divided by 10 raised to 6. I'll put the value of n, I'll put the value of hours, life in hours, I will get the life L10 as million revolutions. Your rated life, rated life in million revolutions is 75 million revolutions. Next, I'm going to use the formula of your load life relationship. L10 is C upon PE raised to 3. Your L10 is 75. C we have to find out, but your PE, you can see here it is 21,000 raised to 3 by 3 because your A, it is a ball bearing. A or P, whatever you say, it is 3. Right? So if this 3 has to go here, it will become. 75 raised to 1 by 3. 25,000 has to come here, then it will be multiplied 21. That much is the value of your C, and it turns out to be 88560.43 Newton. So your first numerical is solved. Next, let's move to another numerical, right? Last time it was of 75 mm diameter. This time the shaft diameter is 40 mm. Numerical is same. Single row deep groove ball bearing. Whenever you hear this word ball bearing, you should understand in load life relationship, A or small p, the value is going to be 3 because it is ball bearing. Right. Moving ahead, single row deep groove ball bearing, pure radial load. Again, axial load is zero. Whenever pure radial load is written, your axial load will be zero. Three kilonewton, you should convert it into newton. 3000 newton, you'll have to convert it into newton. N, your RPM, right? N RPM is 600. RPM. Expected life L10H hours, life in hours L10H is given 30,000 hours. Select a suitable bearing. You'll have to use a design data book for this. It's written that you have to select a suitable bearing from the manufacturer's catalog or design data book. So let us start again. I'll show you the formula that we are using is P is equal to X V F R plus Y F A. Axial load factor, axial load is zero. So there's no question of this, right? Multiplied by your application factor, nothing is given. So I'm going to take one. Race rotation factor V, nothing is mentioned. Whether inner race rotates, outer race rotates, self-aligning bearing is not at all there. It is a sin single row deep groove ball bearing. So V will become 1. X, nothing is given. So I'm going to assume 1. So your P is equal to FR, which is 3000 Newton. Your PE equivalent bearing load is equal to FR. So that will become 3000 Newton. Newton. Next up, just like last time, L10, million revolutions. I want life in million revolutions. So 60 into N into life in hours. So 16 to 600 into life in 30,000 hours divided by 10 raised to 6. See, if you don't divide it by 10 raised to 6, you will get the answer as 1080 into 10 raised to 6 revolutions. But if you want life in million revolutions, you'll have to remove this 10 raised to 6. That's why we are dividing this by 10 raised to 6. Next up, we are going to go to the finding the dynamic load capacity, which is C. Why? Because in front of the C only, you will find out and your shaft diameter. On basis of your shaft diameter and your dynamic load capacity, you'll be able to find out your bearing number. So again, your formula of life load or load life relationship is L10 is C upon 
E. L10 you just now found out, which is 1080. So I'll put here 1080. Sorry, I forgot to put here these two, three. Why three? Ball bearing, right? So if this three comes here, it will become 1080, one by three into again this PE when it comes here it will get multiplied so P is 3000 so 3 is equal to your C so you can see here it is 30779.57 now with this much dynamic load capacity and 40 mm shaft diameter we will select appropriate bearings. So in Bhandari design data book, you can see here in 40 mm shaft diameter. So you'll have to refer these values, which are under 40 mm shaft diameter. I missed out one. Let me draw properly. So here, from here to here, all these values are in 40 mm shaft diameter. But we are going to take C. Our C that we found out was 30779.57. 30779.57. But we have 30700. Technically, you should select higher value. So you could have selected bearing number 6308. But if you subtract this, if you subtract 30779.57 from this 30700, the difference is very less, almost negligible. So we can select this bearing number 6208. This is how you select bearing from manufacturer's catalog. You always see this column of this dynamic load capacity, not this state. You see dynamic load capacity. You see what is the shaft diameter. And then you remember this table is for single row deep groove wall bearing. Remember you are checking the correct table for selection of your value. Single row deep groove wall bearing. This table you will have to refer. Moving ahead very quickly, let's go to numerical three, which was asked in your university exam of winter 2016. Deep groove wall bearing has bore diameter, shaft diameter, 60 mm. Rotates at n RPM is 1440. Radial load FR, radial load 2500 Newton. Axial force load FA is 1200 Newton. Radial factor X is 0 0.56. Thrust factor or axial factor Y is 2.0. Load factor, load application factor, service factor, whatever you call S or KA, one and the same thing. That is 1.2. Expected life in hours, L10HH -H stands for hours. So L10H is 25,000 hours. We are told that you have to find out basic dynamic capacity C and you have to select the bearing from manufacturer's catalog just like we did last numerical. So let's start. Given data we have written, right? We are assuming A as three because it is single row deep groove ball bearing and V race rotation factor V, we are going to assume as one because neither it is said that uh, inner race rotates, outer race rotates. So we are going to take V as one. If it was outer race rotates, we would have taken 1.2, but it's not mentioned. So we will think inner race is rotating and we will assume V as one. Now, first up, we are going to use the formula of equivalent bearing. PE is X, VFR, YFA. X is given 0 0.56. V, we are assuming one. FR is given 2500. 
एक्सिल लोड फैक्टर वाई इज टू पॉइंट जीरो एक्सिल लोड इज ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड एंड सर्विस फैक्टर लोड फैक्टर लोड एप्लीकेशन फैक्टर के ए और एस वॉट एवर यू राइट ऑन इट्स वन पॉइंट टू सो वंस यूल यूज योर कैलकुलेटर यूल गेट इक्विवेलेंट बेयरिंग लोड इक्विवेलेंट डायनेमिक लोड एज फोर फाइव सिक्स जीरो न्यूटन वंस यू फाउंड आउट दिस obviously the next step would be you are going to find out l10 life is given in l10 h which is 25000 right so whether i write down this way 60 n l10 h or i write down this way l10 h 60 n it's one and the same thing in design data book it's written in this manner i write down in this manner it's one and the same thing you can use this formula so L ten H is twenty five thousand into sixteen into fourteen forty. N is given as fourteen forty divided by ten raised to six. Your life will be as two one six zero million revolutions. Next, you are going to use this load life relationship. L ten S C upon P raised to A is three because it is deep proof ball bearing, right? You right now found out life as two one six zero million revolutions. You have calculated an equivalent bearing load as four five six zero. Right. Obviously, again, if this three goes this side, it will become one point three. If four five six zero goes this side, it will has to be multiplied. We'll get C as five eight nine four five point three three newton. Since it is a load, C is your capacity, load capacity, dynamic load capacity. So it will be found out in newton. Next, you are going to refer Bhandari Design Data Book, page fifteen point seven, and for this much load of five eight nine four five point three three in front of sixty mm diameter, you are going to select the bearing. So if I see. That much load is not there, but a higher load of eight one nine zero zero newton is there. So I'll select bearing number six three one two, which can take that much load, sustain that much load. So I'm selecting bearing number six three one two SKF designated bearing six three one two. Next up is the numerical number four, which is. Again, given in winter two thousand ten question paper of your university exam, so let's start. This time the shaft diameter is fifty mm. Again, it is a numerical of ball bearing. So your A or P, whatever you say in the formula of load life relationship, is going to be three. Shaft rotates at n RPM, fifteen hundred RPM. Your thrust load is four five zero zero. FR is four five zero zero. FA. Your radial load is four five zero zero. Thrust load FA. Axial load, thrust load, thrust load, axial load is sixteen hundred newton. Your radial load factor X zero point fifty six. Axial load factor Y one point two. Life in hours. Twenty-two thousand five hundred hours. You have to select a proper ball bearing from the manufacturer's catalog. Inner ring rotates. See, it's given here this time. Hint is given. Inner ring rotates one. Raised rotation factor V will be one. Outer ring rotates. If it was given, V would have V would have taken V as one point two. But here it's inner ring rotates, so we are going to take V as. Service factor S or K A, whatever you say, it's one. This time you don't need to look into the design data book. The table in the numerical itself they have given us the bearing numbers, so we will calculate C, dynamic load capacity C, and in front of that for particular C we are going to select the bearing number, right. So if I if I if I get say your dynamic load capacity is fifty thousand, so I cannot select this bearing. I should get some higher value than fifty thousand, which is six one eight zero zero. 
So I'm going to select 6310. I, I'm just giving the example. I don't know what is the dynamic load capacity we are going to find out. So let's start. I've written down the given data, diameter, NRPM, radial load, axial load, radial load factor, axial load factor, life in hours, and inner ring rotates and service factor S or K as moving ahead. So first up, we are going to select the bearing load formula S I used to multiply here, or if I multiply here, it's one in the same thing, right? So X VFR plus YFA, X is given 0 0.56 inner ring rotate. So V, we are taking one. FR is 4500. Y is given axial load factor is 1.2. Axial load is given 1600. Right. But don't forget that you have to use the board mass rule. You have to first multiply this 0 0.56 into 1 into plus, then you have to put a bracket and multiply this, and then you have to do it. So do the calculation properly. It is 4440 newton, 4000. 440 newton. Next up, life in hours is given, which is 22500. I want in million revolutions. So I'll multiply 22500 into 60 into N RPM, shaft RPM, which is 1500, divided by 10 raised to 6. So I'll get the life in million revolutions. Next up, I'm going to use the load life relationship formula. L10 is C upon P raised to A or P. Some books it is written P, some books return it is A. It's one and the same thing. Since we are solving the numerical for ball bearing, the value will be three. If the numerical was of roller bearing, we would have taken 10 by three. But now it's a numerical of ball bearing. So we are taking it as three. So we already found out life L10 as 2250. Here we have found out the equivalent load P as 4440. Right. So once you do the simplification, simplification as in 2025, this three will come this side, then it will become one by three. So I'm writing one by three into this will multiply over here, four, 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 zero. So you will get the answer as 5617.6. Now, if you see the table, which is given in your numerical, Higher than this 56172.6, 56172.6, right? 56172.6, higher value is 61800, higher than 56172.6. This is a smaller value than 56. 172.6, but this is the higher value than 56. So we are going to select the bearing number as 6310. This is the suitable bearing for this particular application of radial load, axial load, and other factors acting on it. So hopefully you understood how to do the calculations. Thank you.